Hey, spooky parents. We want to help promote an awesome alternative clothing brand from the Midwest made just for you ghouls. It's Feral Mama. The brand was started by Gretchen, a mother of four living in Cleveland, Ohio, who is a trained doula and has a passion for supporting motherhood and other mothers who are struggling with mental illness, postpartum depression, and mothers who are struggling to find a support group for other alternative mothers. Since she started her business, she has found an awesome community that has supported her through thick and thin. We support her on this mission as parents ourselves. Feral Mama has lots of comfy t-shirts with spooky designs for You know, mostly mamas, but also some unisex options are available for any of you papas or caregivers out there. She also sells kids shirts from time to time, as well as hoodies, crew neck, long sleeve shirts, patches, pins, mugs, and some other really cute bags. You can use my code OBSCUREIVY to get 10% off your first order using the link in the description on our Instagram or even on our YouTube, uh, feralmamashop.com slash OBSCUREIVY. That's feralmamashop.com slash Ascara Ivy. By supporting her, you will also be helping us continue to do what we do. It can take anywhere between 14 to 21 business days to receive your order, but remember, she is only one person. So go support your local feral mama today. Remember to support small businesses, women, and of course, badass mamas everywhere. The Midwest, home sweet home in good old Indiana, a place of small towns, cozy families gathered together, and fields of corn and rustic woods. But, like any town, there is a dark underbelly that often goes unnoted. We are part of that darkness. We lurk in the shadows to bring you the best in horror, metal, and stories of the grotesque. This is Blood in the Cornfields. All right, welcome in, cellar dwellers. Hello, everybody. Howdy, howdy. How are we all doing? Hope you all are doing great. It, yes. <laughs> I hope this fucking weather goes away. I'm feeling better, but I hope this nasty, rainy shit goes away soon. It's kind of annoying because it, like, you know, just threw two or three days out where it was, like, 75. Yeah. And, like, good. And then just, yeah, no, we're going to do highs of 40. And that's just and what it's like and all that being in the fucking Midwest. Yeah. And I'm about sick of it. It really, it really <laughs> I, is. I'm about sick of the little cock <laughs> It's just, just a little bit. Just a tip. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Well, um, yeah, I guess a quick shout out to anyone that was at the um, spooky story reading. I don't yeah. remember the name of what uh, we're officially were calling it. It was called uh, the Iron Moth yeah, Hour. Yeah, the Iron but it was Moth like Hour. That's fiction, what it is. Yes. kind of, but not fiction. It was like true stories, true yes. spooky stories. It was. It was good. Yeah. So I, I presented. I, you know, told a story of some of you. If you know, heard the Robert the Doll story, but I went in a little bit more detail. Throughout Gene's childhood, his parents uh, would often hear their son upstairs talking to the doll and um, and getting a response back in a totally different voice. Uh, they reported seeing the doll speaking and witnessing his expressions change, which that may sound crazy, but the people that house Robert in the museum that I'll tell you about also talk about when they clean the glass, when they change the glass, when they move Robert from positions, his expressions change. They've seen it, they swear to it, they swear by it. And everything that I'm telling you is actually real. So, uh, pretty crazy stuff. Um, they also reported him um, giggling and sightings of him running up the stairs. Yeah, kind of creepy. Very Chucky-ish, but... Um, but like, when I'm sitting there, Waiting for everyone to go up. Like, what I said to the audience is, like, really what I felt because it was like, there's a fucking dentist going yeah. and then a girl that literally went to college for creative writing. And I'm like, right. I'm like, oh, shit. So I'm like, dude, I'm and just a, a podcaster. Guy. Yeah. I'm just a podcaster that laughs at dick and fart jokes. Yeah. Like, that's literally it. So, but that was fun. Um, it was good to get up in front of people and kind of, you know, present a story and rep the podcast a little bit, just doing some stuff. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed being there at Lang Lab. Lang Lab is really the place to go now. Mm-hmm. Lang Lab and The Well and Krishna Den are like yeah. the places, not just for metal shows, but I'm just saying just for community in general. Yeah, and then and like they had drinks and they had yeah. food and I had no idea that I was supposed to make a hard left when I first came in. <laughs> so I'm all walking over there down by the tables and shit and they're yeah. just like, yeah, you need to 
not be over here. So <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yes. So that was great. Um, again, wanted to start off quickly. Uh, the last episode that we put, mm-hmm. I noticed we're getting a lot of feedback, but I want to just remind everybody, yeah, hey, hit the true, like button. Our true crime. Yes. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Um, it does help us out. It's going to help us reach more people. So we're getting a lot of, you know, kind of views and stuff like that. But I just want to remind, hey, hit the like button. Make sure that, you know, we're doing something with the algorithm. Yeah, doing you know, something right. So that way more people can find our stuff. <laughs> I'm glad that people found an interest in this true crime episode. It especially is. Especially with it being a cold case. Exactly. Yeah, that's I was kind of kind of dr- driving over here thinking like that's if we could have any episode be the most viewed. That's the one that I would choose. Definitely. So yeah. feels good. Um, I love that our true crimes are probably the, the most viewed on average. Average, yeah, so it's very good popular. because they get to hear those stories and everything. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, what's what's new with you? So just for me, I don't have a whole lot, but I just oh, want to go over just some new events that will be mm-hmm. taking place. Um, so, of course, you know, as of this recording, it would have already passed. But we want to thank the Krishna Den for allowing us to do the green room. Yes. For all the bands that performed that, that day. Um that's wonderful. Thank you so much for allowing us to do that. Uh, we love being able to give back to our community, especially mm-hmm. our fellow metalheads and cellar dwellers, Absolutely. considering the fact that the well basement, we're literally going to be around yep. a whole bunch of cellar dwellers. That's right. <laughs> so, yes, thank you guys so much. And thank you so much yeah, to the owner of the Krishna Den. He's a, he's a great guy. And then we also have our Black Tornado collab coming yes, up. I'm excited for this one. God, they sent us some banger songs and we're excited to share Mm -hmm. them with you. And we also have uh, friends in the metal community that we would like to share our songs uh, with you all there. Uh, So it'll be fun. What what we're kind of planning on doing is like... uh, if you know Black Tornadoes, the way they have it set up, in between each song, they kind of do a little talk. Yeah, you know, back and they forth. They talk about it. They talk, maybe talk about something else, but uh-huh. it's always fun. It's always fun it's and just, lighthearted. It's good banter, yeah. Yeah, Ian and Ian and Adam Adam uh-huh. have like a really good chemistry. They do. And you guys were talking us up so much in the last episode. That was way too kind of <laughs> yes. you, but goddamn. <laughs> and the fact that we won the... Uh, <laughs> The drawing? I, I felt so bad. Yeah. I was like, no, throw it back in. Yeah. Do something yeah, else. It like, the, yeah. it doesn't need to go to S- us. Save it and, and um, throw that bitch for another round. Yeah, and he goes, well, you know, people just don't want free stuff, apparently. So, if he ever does another giveaway, do yourselves a favor. Actually, like, fucking join it. Yeah, like, absolutely. It's free shit. Just, just do it. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> just do don't it. Don't be a lazy shit. Exactly. <laughs> and then, uh, another thing that's coming up in June... We are doing Pride Month. Yes, that's right. So we have quite a bit in the works for Pride Month. We're work, working with actually a local drag performer. Oh. And we are going to be collaborating with a local uh, queer band as well to bring you a uh, true crime episode. Sweet. So we'll have kind Love of a, the true crimes. Yeah. So we'll, and we'll also do a movie review. But there's one other thing that we're going to need everybody's help with for Pride Month. And we're going to do a poll. All right. Uh, so this is the thing. We want to do something fun, something out of our comfort zone. Uh, and this will definitely be it. And Mark's like shaking his head over (laughs) here. He's like, oh man. Hey, if you guys, whatever you guys want, fuck it. So here are your choices for that. And like I said, we will have a poll where we'll tally everything up and don't worry. The last poll that we had, which was the, um, the 50 views thing about exploring a banning oh, yeah. building. We will get that to you. We're, it's just, we're fi- trying to find a fucking place to go. Yes. So there, there's a couple things that have stalled on that and we haven't forgot about it. It's just finding a place where we won't get arrested is right. not always easy, but then also fitting it into the schedule that we have, because yeah. like we've been telling you guys, like we've started to get a lot more interaction a lot more things coming up um and then our lives are kind of busy you know ivy Mm -hmm. has a son i have a daughter um we've got time that we're spending with them so no we've we've not forgot about it Mm -hmm. um it's just that one's a little bit harder to set up not to mention all around elkhart county there's been a shit ton of abandoned buildings that we could have explored that are being torn down yes yeah like left and right and i'm just like god damn that could have been fun that Mm -hmm. could have been fun but they're all gone now yep so um yeah yeah, so that's what we have but for the actual pride month poll ready here Here we we got it thank you (laughs) it's going to be either (laughs) 
We perform and drag for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> would would that mean that would so when you I would, would be a guy? I, yeah, I'd be a dude. Okay, all right, all right. With cock and balls and everything. <laughs> Are you borrowing them from someone? <laughs> I might be. You know, okay. Don't test me, Mark. <laughs> All right, all right. You'll okay. have boobs. All right. <laughs> Second choice is a interview with a local burlesque troupe. We're okay. thinking about reaching out to the distressed dolls or an awesome burlesque yes. group. And I kind of have, so I've kind of cued them. Awesome. Because I've I want to do something with them regardless, mm-hmm. but like my thoughts is like I want to do something spooky themed. Mm-hmm. And I've talked to a couple of them and they seem down, but I don't know if we're gonna be able to do the whole troop. Yeah. Or if they'll perform like maybe four of them or okay. something like that. I don't know. So sure. that's something I'm working on down the pipe. That'll be fun, especially closer I, to October. Yes, I want to do something spooky themed. So mm-hmm. I just don't know the details. So. That'll be great. So regardless, we might do that. Yep. Third, third uh, potential thing that we might do is pole dancing. <laughs> <laughs> my, my fat ass ain't gonna hang up on a pole very long. I, I would love to see it. So there you have it. There are your three choices. All right. We'll put them out on a pole. Be thinking about them. What do you want yes, to see us so do? So pick however you want. Yep. Either way, it'd be a lot of fun. I'm sure we'll potentially record ourselves making fools out of ourselves, but it'll be a great time. Oh, we have to have someone legit actually do my makeup because if I'm doing my makeup, I know. I'm going to look like, I'm already going to look like shit. I'm going to be a nasty I shit. know a wonderful they, them that can help. Okay, all right. It's whatever. all good. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, what I pretty much have for you is just um, the Riverbend Film Festival finally announced its date. Yay! So, yay! It's so nice because, you know, they had some issues there for a little bit because it was, I think it was supposed to be this spring, but it didn't quite come to fruition for one reason or another. So now we're looking at August 30th through the 31st. So get your tickets oh, if you can. That's such a good time of year. Yeah. It's going to start to get a little bit colder, a little mm-hmm. folly. Oh, yeah, that's a good time of year. So definitely get your tickets if you can. I don't know if tickets have come on sale yet, but be on the lookout for it for, yeah. you know, and supporting your local um, directors and artists and actors. Yes, absolutely. Who knows? Maybe you might even see us there. You might even see uh, Tim Wallach there. I so. mean, I'll slut myself out to whatever. No stranger. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all the news I got for you. What about you, Mark? So I've got some news. Uh, digging through some stuff. Did a little little researchy little digging. So first thing I'd start off with is just a little cool note. Uh, Merciful Fate played a show on the 22nd Ooh. for the first time in a year and a half. Oh, my God. Um, don't come over here very often. Um, I, no way. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you know, but whatever they may. I, I think they do, you know, eventually. I don't know if King Diamond comes over here more than Merciful Fate does. I don't know if there's, you know, a difference. They both two are the same. Mm-hmm. They may not have the same management. Who knows? But anyway, I just thought yeah. that was really cool that they played a live show on the 22nd uh, for the first time in a year and a half. So switching gears, I'm going to be going back and forth. We're going to be doing yeah, some gear fine. switching. So um, what do we call it? The video, the preview, the trailer. Oh, oh yeah. Why Tra- I not think of that it's word. Right. The trailer for Stream, a new What's movie. That? A new movie has come out. So it's the trailer for, it has a lot of well-known actors, actresses in it. So I'll go through the list. Huh. Daniel Harris is in it. Tony Todd, who plays Candyman. Ooh. D. Wallace, who I believe was the mom in E.T. And the mom in Cujo. Yep. Um, Tim Reed. I've seen him a bunch, but I forget what I've seen him in. Um, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about if you look him up. Yeah. Jeffrey Combs <gasps> from Reanimator. Reanimator, I yes. love him. Uh, Daniel uh, Roebuck, who played... Um, in the Munsters, Rob Zombies, he was the Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. He was Herman. Yep. Yeah. Herman. Um, and then uh, Felissa Rose <gasps> is going to be My bitch. It. Yes. I love her. Yes. From uh, just like Sleepaway, Sleepaway Camp. Sleepaway Camp. Yeah. Oh, yeah I love absolutely. her. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Those some pretty, pretty good horror actors in this movie. Oh, my God. I have no I would clue what so. it's about. Uh, the trailer didn't last very long, um, but it, it was pretty cool. That dropped today. Totally uh, kind of excited about that. Did not see a release date oh, on it, though. Oh, he was Mike. Uh, that that Tim Tim Reed. He was uh, the Mike from the It movies. Oh, okay. Like, from the original. Okay, yeah, movies. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been in a ton of stuff, but he yes, hasn't really he has. had, like, like, really big 
roles, but you would recognize them. Like if you're in the horror community, you'd recognize them. Yeah, song. that's pretty cool. Um, so shifting gears, going back to the music side of things, and so there's a couple reasons why I am talking about this. Yeah, because it's gonna lead me into a little bit of rant. Ooh, ooh okay. and I'm gonna kind of combine two things. Let's hear I'm you rant about. away. Okay, so. Sebastian Bach. Yeah, we talked about him in our last metal yes. episode. He has a new song out. It's called Hold On Hold On to the Dream. It's uh, the video, the visuals are pretty ridiculous. <laughs> um, there's one scene where he's supposed to be running, but you can plainly tell that he's like walking oh, man. with the gestures like he's running, yeah. but you can absolutely tell he's not running. Weird. Looks really weird. Um, <laughs> his scenes where it's just him and his motions and stuff are really awkward. But the man at 56 can still sing. That's awesome. I've always felt that like out of that whole group, whether it was like the Guns N' Roses, the Motley Crue, mm -hmm. you know, the Warrant or what, Bon Jovi, all that bullshit. Like out of that whole era and genre, the only legit vocalist, in my opinion, was Sebastian Bach. He does phenomenal performances. Yes. Didn't you say he was an opera singer? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, he, he was in Phantom of the Opera. Um Legit singer, I'll say it all the time. He's kind of corny, whatever. I don't give a shit, but like legit singer. And I will back that up with in comparison to some of the best internet videos I love are of 63 year old Vince Neal. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So before, so Motley Crue, I'm going to talk about them in a couple of minutes. Motley Crue re reunited. They kicked out Mick Mars or maybe he's too old. I don't remember. And they, yeah. had, they got this Johnny five guy, five John, <laughs> John five. I don't know what the fuck his name Johnny is. Johnny five. I immediately think of that little <laughs> robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mama he's was a, a snowblower. <laughs> he was alive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know the guy's name. I that's, think it's like John five or something. That's funny. I don't fucking know. But anyway, so, before they got back together, Vince Neal was like doing like fairs mm -hmm. and shit. Oh, like, wow. yeah, he was rough and he was way overweight. And I love listening to the live clips of him singing the songs. They're fucking shit terrible. He doesn't say any of the words. You can find him just if you do yourself a favor, search them if you've not seen them. Like, there's this one clip where they put up what they think he's saying and he says, like, Martha Stewart, <laughs> and eat cake, and like just all this oh shit. God. It's so terrible. So, I look at Vince Neal and then I look at Axl Rose. I don't yeah. know if you've heard new clips of him singing. Yes. It's fucking terrible. Yeah. And, and he both, released a new song not oh, too long ago and I was like, oh, oh no. It's horrible. They ought like, to in the show. And, and right. I know why it is. It's because those two guys had shrieky voices that bordered on tone, in tune, slash singing could pass by with some good editing yeah. and your younger vocal cords back then you could do it you could do it but yeah. now like vince neal being overweight doesn't help him out all the smoking all the drinking has yeah. completely shot his voice that sounded shrieky unique-ish yeah um it's just gone it's fucking gone and now i hope that now that Motley Cruz got back together, he's like taking some vocal lessons. He's mm -hmm. chilled out, drinks a lot of honey, does organic <laughs> shit. You know, he's doing his Pilates. It's I, all good. I don't know. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty ridiculous, and that leads me into Motley Crue, who actually um, are releasing their first song uh, this coming Friday, which is in oh, two days. Wow. But yeah, so this Friday um, they're going to release the song called "Dogs of War." OK, um, I don't know how long ago, but it was I think it was someplace in Europe. They did a uh, like a surprise show. Oh, wow. But under the name Dogs of War. Interesting. And it sold out really quick because obviously the Internet's is a thing. Yeah. And I think they put the two little circles above one of the letters. And so it kind of gave it away. Uh, it's the same. in yeah, Motley Group. Yeah. Um, they and I think it was their first performance with this John five guy. I don't mm -hmm. fucking know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they, they played some little secrety show type thing. So I um, figured that was kind of interesting. But to keep it going, since we've got like this old metalheads update that we're yeah. somehow doing, uh, Megadeth. <laughs> 
has signed on for a new to- tour with Mudvayne and All That Remains. That would so, be genuinely fun to go see Megadeth. I, I, I was, like them. Oh, dude, I was a Megadeth. Like, Were you yeah. know, people people loved Metallica and yeah. loved Megadeth. I'm just like, man, it's not even a fucking question. Like, Dave Mustaine They're just fun. musically just buries anyone that's ever been in Metallica. Cliff Burton is probably the most talented, but, like, just Dave Mustaine is just way fucking better than all mm-hmm. of them. And um, his vocals are of that vein too mm-hmm. that were kind of shrieky, kind of yeah. unique and they're 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 going somewhere but they're he, not as bad. His was a little bit more lower though. Yes. That was so the I thing. He never did the high like ah shit. Well, well yeah, he, he never really did that. Well, he did more of he the sweating bullets oh, okay. and sweating bullets That's, but uh, yeah. yes. But it was less frequent. Yes, it was not. It he was didn't not, do yeah. that every fucking song. Yeah. You know, you hear things like uh Symphony of Destruction, you know. You take a mortal man, put him in control. <laughs> yeah, see, like you Watch do. Him become a god. Watch his heads will grow. We're just gonna do a karaoke yeah, night. That's, a, that's the rest of the episode. We're just gonna, <laughs> we're sing. Just gonna sing. We're just gonna sing Megadeth. <laughs> that's it. End of show. <laughs> so, um, that's a pretty big tour. Um, mm-hmm. I. I've been an All the Remains fan mildly for a while. Um, they put on a good show. I've seen them in Austin. So this is their first tour. That's um, awesome. And first album after their guitar player, Ali, died. Oh, so Ali shit. passed away. It's been a couple years now. Um, kind of. I don't know if that's all been settled, but it was kind of a little mysterious. I know that there was some court stuff. Oh, so shit. I think it's had to take a little while mm-hmm. um, for them to, you know, move on and all that sort of stuff. I forget who their new guitar player is. You know, like, you know, I, I like the band, but I'm not like up to date on the shit. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, that was the other little kind of update that I had. And I think that's basically everything new um, mm-hmm. other than it's really interesting that you sent me that thing. About oh yeah. 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 Uh, days later. Yeah. So we, I, I found this interesting post on Instagram that basically stated that like 28 days later is no longer on any sort of streaming platform right now. And uh, the Blu-ray has now been discontinued. Yeah. So nobody can find 28 days later once it's been talked about. And this was what somebody posted and said, this is why I need to reiterate how important it is that you collect physical mm-hmm. media. It is. Completely agree. Yes, absolutely. Plus, it's like, I mean... It just fucking looks cool. Mm-hmm. It just fucking looks cool. Like, I mean, you see our backgrounds all the time. Yeah. Whenever we're interviewing somebody, you see all the shit we've collected over the years. You're almost like a little mini historian when you do yeah, that shit. Absolutely. And the thing, too, I mean, you know, the stuff is going to just become that much more rare and rare. So the stuff that you have is actually going to become more valuable, you know? Absolutely. Um, I'm looking forward to like doing some garage sailing this year. Oh, absolutely. It's just, getting close to that season, yeah, man. Get some, some motherfuckers that don't know what they got and be like, Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude. Sometimes you find weird pornos there and I'm just like, I need that in my collection. <laughs> yes. We saw in like somebody's uh collection of like girls gone wild tapes. Mm-hmm. Like you remember those? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, but like it was like in those tapes was an Emmanuel DVD. It, it meant like the little guy. No, 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 no. This there is was like a little actor named Emmanuel. Emmanuel uh, Lewis, I think. Emmanuel Lewis. Yeah, no, this was called it's called Emmanuel. And it's like a I think it's like, a French porno series. Like there's yeah. multiple ones in this series. <sighs> okay. And it all takes place about a chick named Emmanuel. And it's like a whole series of porno movies. Mm. And one of them happened to be in that collection. Luke did not buy it because he I think he already had it on another yeah. disc on another like collection set. So he didn't get it, but it was like, that's interesting that somebody this local would have an Emmanuel tape. That is, that's, <laughs> that is interesting. Yeah. You find some gems. I remember there was this one dude that I'm going to probably see if he's doing it again, but the guy used to own a video store. <gasps> no, but way. the problem is he knows what he's got. Oh, he well, knows what he's got. So shit. I'm just like, shit, man. And I was like asking him for movies and, um, he seemed like a legit guy, uh-huh. but he, and he was like, well, you know, I have my collection in the basement. I'm like, mm, mm-hmm. just met you, bro. Don't know if I'm going to go down to your basement. He was legit and everything. Um, but he's like, went to his basement and pulled out and was like, here, you can look through these stacks. Oh my it was God. like, you know, what do you got trauma wise and all stuff? And I'm like, fuck man. I'm like, how much can I spend here? Cause it's like, you know, you're going to go to a garage. So you're, you're not expecting to drop a hundred bucks. 
man, at least me. If it's if it's something that's worth it, like you said, like if I know that this man has a gem downstairs, like a gold mine, how much is it? Let me cut you a check. Yeah. <laughs> Do you take checks? So I'm going to go to that neighborhood and hope that Where he's was it there at? again. I'll have to I'll have to show It wasn't near you. Milford, was it? No, it was like in Goshen. So okay, I got a weird question because I had a really awesome friend back when I was in well, part of high school, mm-hmm. but mostly my elementary years. I used to spend the night at her house all the time. Okay. And her grandfather used to run a movie store. Hmm. That's where I found a lot of interesting shit at. Yeah. And um her last name was Shepard. I have no idea what this guy's name That's was. okay. Yeah. I just figured, hey, if you happen to run into this guy again, see yeah. if his last name's Shepard. Because... I doubt it. Well, he could... Be, so, he's not the grandpa. Because he's okay. like he's like younger than what my parents are. Okay. Yeah, he's younger than what my parents are. He would be a grandpa now, okay. but not when you were younger. Okay. He I mean, I, I doubt it. I doubt this it. This guy was cool. He had like a basement that yeah. had every type of VHS movie you could think yeah. of. It was where I was first introduced to like trauma movies oh, and sweet. killer clowns from outer space yeah. and uh, the Chucky movies because sweet. I wasn't allowed to watch those as a kid. You know, weirdly <laughs> enough, even though my dad let me watch like Nightmare, Nightmare on Elm Street, Street and yeah. shit, but like, I guess, you know, they started getting to the religious thing and so they got more worried about different things so yeah. they didn't let me watch it. But whenever I'd go over to her house, I would see this treasure trove of <laughs> interesting shit that I never knew even existed i just was looking admiring all the like covers the vhs yeah. covers and everything because i remember also seeing because i knew about this from the my past video store experience i saw the ghoulies cover and i was like that's oh, that movie yes. um and nobody else in my friend group knew about this and i'm like that's a good one <laughs> um so yeah i i don't know i just i can i can see it clearly when i had a sleepover there um he his basement was incredible kind of like our basement where mm-hmm. it's got like a bar yeah. Uh, and then it had like a weird downstairs. So it had a downstairs, but there was even a deeper downstairs. Uh, interesting. But it was like it was separated into uh, a couple bedrooms. Hmm. And in those bedrooms, he had weird memorabilia. Like he had like an old SNL doll. OK. Uh, I think it was a John Belushi one, which I think my husband has. <laughs> and uh, it, there was also a Steve Urkel doll in there, like the evil no, Steve Urkel. <laughs> yeah, it was the evil Steve, Steve Urkel doll that was in there. And I was like, oh, this is badass. And I just remember like spending a lot of time in there and all the other girls were outside playing. And I was and just like, down there. no, I need to look through all yeah. this shit, man. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. I would have been doing the same damn thing. Yeah. So, yeah, but you unlocked a memory. So that's why I was like, oh, I need to share this now <laughs> because that was such an ingrained experience of yeah. going over to that house. I guess that kind of brings us to what we're going to get in the meat and potatoes of this episode. Absolutely. So uh, we've been talking it up a lot. Mm-hmm. We're, it's now on Shutter, So we're figuring, let's go ahead and take a look at min- or, uh, Late Night. Late Night, night with, with the, the devil. devil. Not yep. Midnight. <laughs> That's <Yep>. too far. <laughs> I can't make it to Midnight. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't anymore either. <laughs> Though we might have to with the way my son's been screaming upstairs. My son goes full Damien mode in church. <laughs> In in church, definitely yeah. take him to the back. Yes, <laughs> in church, this boy. As soon as we get him, so the only reason why I bring that up is because in our last uh, video we did a review on the first the omen. First omen, and as our thumbnail was a picture of Casper looking like Damien out in the cemetery. <laughs> it, it, it's great outfit for him. I love that outfit. Such. <laughs> Such a cool ass outfit. Yeah. And it's like, well, I intentionally did that because when he was three months old, I was going to dress him up as Damien anyway. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, man, I got to buy him like a bigger jacket that he can wear when he's older. And oh, he pulled it off. Great. Yeah. That little kid. He's a stunning kid. <laughs> yeah. I got to check to see if he's actually got sixes on his head or in his <laughs> mouth or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah I got to look. Mouth, yeah. I got to look or it's on his ass or something. <laughs> uh, but like, yeah, the reason why I brought that up is because like, damn, that kid. Uh, last time I took him into church, I took him into the like the fur, the back pew because mm-hmm. I'm like, OK, and just yeah. in case, you know, yep. it's gotta, I got to get out or something like that. Kid, as soon as like they start saying the Our Father prayer. 
that <laughs> screaming. Like, you know that scene from uh, The Omen where he's like, it, before they pull up to the church, he like starts beating on his mom. Yeah. That's exactly how Casper acted. And I'm like, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. So now we're always in like the nursery or cry room. I'm like, I'm not going through this again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't need my anybody in the church knowing that or thinking not knowing mm. not a Freud, freudian slip <laughs> but not thinking that my son's possessed yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah let's watch late night with the devil um the only thing is it's like let's go into non-spoiler stuff sure. yet. what do we think about it first off what do we think based on the trailer and everything so i have recently tried to not watch any trailer type stuff for the movies we've been talking about. Like mm -hmm. I initially saw the first Omen, like the the little trailer for it, and uh -huh. then I I did not research, have not watched, have not seen. I did the same thing with Late Night with the Devil, um, and then going off of kind of what Tim uh, was saying, Tim. I'm c curious to see if it's real to time. Kind of like how I was saying with the Omen, and I was mm -hmm. hoping it would be that as well too, mm -hmm. not look hokey and, yeah, and that yeah. sort of stuff. So I'm looking forward to that, but. I want to see like what the story plays out and why that she's on a late night talk show. Right. Like, I think the concept of that is kind of crazy. Yeah. So I want to kind of see what the story is behind that. And then I also want to see how good the actress is, because if she's just sitting in a chair being interviewed yeah. and she's doing possession type shit, like that seems like that would be kind of difficult yeah. as an actor. So I'm going to be kind of paying attention on that too. So, but as far as, Details of it, I know none. I've been trying to avoid as much as I can, too. Honestly, anytime a movie comes out, I try to avoid as much as possible. Even trailers, because I hate the way trailers nowadays seem to give away a lot of yeah, very important do. plot they points. Do. However, like... For the most part, the first Omen did a good job. I feel like they didn't give too much away. You already knew what you were going into anyway. I think they did a great job, too. Um, so I wasn't too worried about that. Late Night with the Devil, I have not <clears throat> seen any trailers for, to good. be honest. I've tried to keep that as very... Nah, I don't want to know as yeah. much as possible. Not to mention the new Fangoria magazine that I picked up that I've been raving about from Karma Records. Plug. Yes, um, Karma, Karma, Karma. I'm going to try and go there them. before I get go out of town. So. You should. It's so good. Um, and like I, I, I have been avoiding that interview that they did with uh, the main actor on yeah. there that Tim Wellick had talked about. Mm -hmm. um, so. I'm trying really hard to like stay away from it and just go into this as blind as possible because I think that's the best way you can go into it. Like Joey Kaufman of The Holy Nothing also went into it too, but I'm like, mm, I'm gonna try to just la 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 and let me just see what happens. Yeah, you know, I think that'll be good. Yeah, so we'll get back with you. Absolutely, yeah. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. On Halloween night, 1977, America gathered around for a live TV event that shocked a nation. What happened was real. What you are about to see is the recently discovered master tape of what went to air that night. Ladies and gentlemen, now, here's Mr. Mitch Dr. Jack Dowell. Late Night with the Devil. All right, everyone, we are back. Back. We are. And back, we back. watched Late Night, <laughs> Late with, Night with the, the Devil. Devil. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Where do you even begin? I know. Why do we get ourselves into these new age horror movies? I'm I'm in a special mood because I was rearranging my room, mm -hmm. going through all my like old VHS, mm -hmm. like my 80s and 90s shit. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, that was the heyday. <laughs> the heyday the of horror. The heyday of horror, for sure. I'm yeah, just like, these new movies don't have quite the same feeling, even though they tried to invoke it, but there's times where they, they get just right there on the edge, mm. where it's like, oh, that was so close, you know? I find myself liking parts of so many new movies, mm -hmm. and uh, once again, parts of this. I liked parts of this, mm -hmm. and I know we're not spoiler 
yeah, yeah. Spoilering it. Mm -hmm. That's my new verbiage. Um, (laughs) But yes, parts. Uh, You know, I I liked parts of it. So, um, man, where did we begin? I guess we kind of need to cue all the listeners into. Also, quick, before we forget, um, let's get those interactions going. If you like us, please subscribe. You know, hit the like button, share, do all that sort of stuff. We're trying to get bigger to do more things. Y'all have heard the spiels, but I'm just doing a reminder because, you know. We appreciate it, too. You know, check out, you know, Luke will put in a plug, Feral Mama, like we yes. always do. Um, and where I'm going tomorrow, Karma Records. Anyway, we talk oh, about it? absolutely. I'm glad that I'm you're going, going there back. tomorrow. That's yes. awesome. Yep. Got to see your haul from this next thing. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm still going to kind of eh, curb the budget a little bit, trying to be a little, I don't know, money conscious. But, yeah, yeah. so definitely going to karma records but um yeah back to late night with the devil yeah um set us up with what really the premise is because i'm so bad at this yeah so basically the premise is like um a host a late night host uh johnny or no not johnny carson jack he's he's competing jack is competing with johnny carson yes jack delroy Mm -hmm. um has like a special halloween uh a special Halloween late night show it's, where he brings on a lot of supernatural things, yeah. you know, like like a sidekick and uh, a, a skeptic that's also a magician. Like a debunker. Yeah, and also um, an actual uh, exorcism, like uh, like an actual person that is possessed. Is possessed, yes. Um, and just for clarification, real quick, it's a episode specifically that's Halloween, but he does multitudes of episodes that are different. It's like a late night talk show. Yeah. So I don't know if that came clear across, but just for transparency, this is a Halloween episode. Yeah. But it's a special one because it's one he's concocting with the intentions of shocking everyone mm-hmm. in order to boost, boost his, his ratings. ratings. Mm-hmm. Yes, because he's constantly <laughs> getting beat out by that damn Johnny Carson. <laughs> um so yeah. So yeah, so that's basically the premise of it. And as you can imagine, it all goes terribly wrong. Yes, it does. Very. <laughs> and it, very it does. quick. <laughs> and I, I'm glad that I, I try to with movies that we're gonna watch, I try to not know much about them. Mm-hmm. Um I'll probably only watch the trailer once. Uh and then I like to just kind of dive in. Yeah. So um Man, I really yeah, have to was, remind myself spoiler. No there was spoilers. a lot of hype around this movie, and I think there we, really talked, was. we talked about that last time. You to know. go back to it, now that it's rolled out and it's been out, it is Shudder's um, highest grossing uh, movie that for views. That's so awesome. it beat out uh, When Evil Lurks. <laughs> so, yes. Wow. It, it is it is Shudder's highest viewed uh, movie. That's awesome. Wow. Um, so, kind of a little bit of context for the movie as well. Um, it was directed by Cameron. I think it's Karenes and also Colin Karenes. Okay. Uh, sorry if I'm pronouncing your names wrong, uh, but they're known as the Karenes brothers um, because they do films together. Like Sweet. they specifically work together quite often. That's not very common. I know the Fairley brothers do yeah. comedy, but that's, mm-hmm. that's the only one I can think of. Um, so uh, this was this is not their first directorial debut. As a matter of fact, they've done other horror films. Their actual first directorial debut was A Hundred Bloody Acres in 2012. It was a horror comedy. Huh. Um, it was basically kind of a silly premise where it's about um, these people that are trying to uh, use dead bodies as fertilizer. I mean, yeah. It's kind of convenient. To kind of boost their... The form of recycling or right? composting. It's, you're you're just helping the earth. <laughs> um, I also know that this film, I believe, was initially supposed to be a Fangoria Presents film as well. So I will say, at the very beginning of this movie, there was a shit ton of, like, title cards. Or yeah. not title cards, but, like producers yes. and logos and like so many different studios that were involved in. I'm like, God, is this ever going to be done? Yeah. There's so many of them. I did like that stop motion one though, too. That, that was cool. Yeah. There's a lot. Of, yeah, there's a lot of different stuff going on. But the cool thing is that, uh, the actor that plays Jack Delroy, I think it's David da- dash. Good luck with the name. Das- <laughs> Luke helped me before <laughs> you can help me again. Uh, Dasmulchen. Uh, that's completely wrong. But basically, David um, was actually cast for the re- lead role after the uh, the Karnas brothers uh, read an article he wrote for Fangoria magazine uh, that was all about TV horror hosts. Oh, 
Yeah, he's a big horror nerd. Hmm, I like, didn't know that. I had no idea either. I did not have a chance to read the article, unfortunately, but just uh, hearing a little bit of the article that he was interviewed for for Fangoria, this latest issue that I picked up from Karma. Thank you, Karma, uh-huh. again. Um, he he knows his shit. Like, he was, like, when he was doing the Fangoria uh, article that the brothers picked him up on, he basically was listing Sven Gulli. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was listing, like Tom Wolock had mentioned. Yeah. Uh, because they kind of had a connection there. And then he also referenced, like, you know, Vampira, Elvira, even Gilbert Godfrey when he did kind yeah. of his late night his stuff. Late night, yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to um, that shit. And of course, Joe Bob Briggs. <laughs> yeah. Because how can you not Joe mention Joe Bob? Um, so that was really cool to hear how much of a nerd he was. And the other thing is, too, um, I didn't realize how many movies this guy is actually in. I knew I'd seen his face quite a few times, but he did not have any roles that like stood out in my mind. So he <laughs> they even joke about this in the Fangoria interview with him that uh, he's most known for uh the uh let's see here uh, he's most known for being polka dot man in the suicide squad too yes oh my gosh that yeah. was him yeah because he like goes on the beach and gets blown up or something i forget yeah he he makes it towards the end but like yeah he he dies a very sad way it's like oh you made it this far and, oh shit dude i'm sorry <laughs> um and then he's also known for his very minor role as one of the Joker's thugs in The Dark Knight. Don't remember that. <laughs> he said he literally had 30 seconds, but apparently a lot of people remember him in that role. OK. Um, but he's also gone on, you know, to kind of show his love of horror uh, by doing other horror movies. He was in the Belco Experiment from 2016. He was in the continuation of the Twin Peaks um, the show. Series? Yeah. Okay. That, like, I think was relaunched in 2017. Yeah. Uh, he was in Bird Box. Really? Yeah. Uh, he was also in The Last Voyage of the Demeter, that recent movie that came out about yeah, Dracula. That I wanted no part of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was also in The Boogeyman from 2023. That's I did not see the 2023. It's, I feel like there's like eight boogeyman. There movies. are. I was going to say I can. The boogeyman one from 2000s. I remember watching. Yeah. And then this I one. I feel like it had some some like heartthrob guy back then, like yeah. Josh Hartnett or fucking. I'm sure it know. did. Uh, I'll actually look it up real quick. <laughs> but this boogeyman was supposed to be a Stephen Keene adaptation. Really? Yeah, because actually, Stephen, this that particular Stephen King adaptation, he actually had had the Boogeyman was a short film that he did uh, that he had made in in the eighties. Actually, Luke has a VHS copy of it. Sure. This is a like longer version of that short film or that short story. Okay. Uh, apparently, he was in it. Uh, it didn't do very well. <laughs> a lot of people don't like it. Um, it actually has a, uh, a score of 5.9 on Rotten yeah. Tomatoes. Uh, Take that with a grain of salt. But, uh, so that's, I think that's pretty cool that he's in more, like, horror stuff yeah. and he's able to, like, kind of spread his wings because he was also in a lot cool. of dramas, too. He also has, like, a, a movie called Rosario that's coming out in 2024 that's in post-production right now. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, he's he is quite the horror nerd. Um, But the thing that we like about Jack Delroy, just kind of his character, is that he um, he gives us like Luke said, like he's kind of like vibes of like the Larry Sanders show. Mm -hmm. It does. And also he even says David even says that he took inspiration, obviously, from Johnny Carson with some of his mannerisms, the hands in the pockets, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and the kind of with the he, no sniff. He does a good job of making a it's uh it's it's like it's an it's an imitation, but it's an imitation mm-hmm. in the actual true sense where it's the you know the dearest form of flattery is imitation. Right. It's that kind of imitation. It's not like absurd or anything like that. You can tell he watched a lot of late night TV stuff mm-hmm. and focusing in on the hosts and all that stuff. Yeah. I thought he did a really, really good job with that. It, it at times was very believable. Mm-hmm. 
Um, especially with the way that the camera, you know, shot everything. It was grainy looking. Mm-hmm. It was very much 70s looking. Yeah. Oh, Pretty God. Pretty damn accurate The brown that. and gold yes. the colors and orange yes. are just so ugly as sin, but which, it's like beautiful at the same time. Absolutely. Which, if you've been listening to us, I think the past two or three movies that we've reviewed, I've said that I, I pay attention to if it really makes it feel like it's the time that it's in, mm-hmm. you know, Um if it doesn't, then I, I don't like it. Like a movie for me that it's like, huh, Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> the the Tim Burton one? Yes. I thought was horrible in that aspect. It did not look accurate for the time period for me. It looked like they were wearing modern clothes trying to make it look like it was back then. Yeah. And that's just the only example I can come up with right off the top of mm-hmm. my head to where I kind of mean, but this this movie did not do that. It, it very looked accurate. Like I said, it was grainy Through pictures. Time period. Clothes were spot on. I could almost smell the smoke through the TV. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone was smoking everywhere. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I also Luke mentioned that he really liked the like side sidekick guy. Yes, he was great. Gus. He was great. Uh, Gus he, was great. He was like he. Luke is like in the Larry Sanders show. He's basically. Uh, Jeffrey Jeffrey's character. Yeah. And I'm like the sidekick. Yeah. Right? And it's like, yeah, no, I see that. No, they both did great. Yeah. And Stephen King also praised it immensely, basically saying this. And I quote on Twitter, I got a screener. It's absolutely brilliant. I couldn't take my eyes off it. Your results may vary, as they say, but I urge you to watch it when you can. Oh, Stephen, my results do vary. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about our non-spoiler thoughts first off. Okay. What, how, what, spoiler free, how do you feel so about So spoiler film? free. So for me, this is a movie that is uh, cut into parts. <laughs> Three-fourths of the movie I'm fairly cool with pretty good movie. Um, not anything that's, you know, too, too stellar, but pr- pretty good movie. The last fourth. I, I'm good. No, I'm good. Did not enjoy it at all. Interesting. Did not enjoy it. Um, Again, no spoilers. It just the way that the movie was going and then they just hard right and it's a hard right like in a different city mm-hmm. like it's not even in the same vicinity and I'm like what? Tim Wallach did say that that was something he didn't quite yeah. particularly like about it either or at least I think when we interviewed him he said eh, the ending was a little yeah I just took, I, a, took him out of it apparently it, it did for me and the movie was going good it was cool I felt like it was building up and building up and then the payoff was like what? You're giving me that? <laughs> Seriously? Like, you had a good movie? Now you don't. Like, for me, and my overall non-spoiler grade is like, meh, I'm good. What would you give on a, on a score from 1 to 10? A 6. 6, really? Yeah, because I do like the beginning, and I do like the originality of it and stuff like that. But, man, you got to give me something better of an ending for that. There's only one part that I liked with the ending, and we'll talk about it later. Awesome. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm not not a fan. I, I could go without even seeing this. I won't see it again. Oh, wow. Will not it's just it like that with Evil Lurks for you, too. Not a fan. <laughs> Shudder, you make shit, yep. apparently, to Mark. <laughs> well, and then, and then I started watching Baghead. Oh, yeah. The movie I was telling you about. Yeah. I can't get through that shit either. So maybe I'm just a douchebag. <laughs> It very much could be, like I said, I'm an 80s, 90s loyal to my heart, dude. And there are some good flicks. Don't get me wrong. I think for you, it's, shit. it's, well, and I don't want to speak for you, but I think for you, it's, it's the 80s knew it was camp. And the new modern stuff is trying to be camp, but is failing hard because they just can't encapsulate and they take themselves way too seriously. Yeah, I, I think that. At the basis of a lot of these new movies, they try to do too much. Evil lurks. I, you know, and I, I know with that movie, there's parts in it that I really didn't like. And I'll give the team some credit because I know legally there were some things they couldn't do and, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So, like, all right, you get a pass for that. Mm-hmm. But just this one, I just was so disappointed with the ending because I had in my mind 
a similar ish direction. It's just what they did was confusing and I felt hokey. Mm hmm. If I have to be honest. Yeah, I feel that. So a very brief uh, thing for me is I love this movie a lot. I'm Good. definitely going to be watching this again, personally. Um, no spoilers. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was funny. I thought it was. I, I don't think it ca- took itself too seriously. I think there was a lot of camp in it. Mm-hmm. And I like that. I personally feel, I know I said earlier, but I personally feel this movie knew what it was and it rolled with that camp value of it, especially at the end. I feel like that was the most campiest thing I've ever seen. And I could totally see this in an 80s film back in the day. Yeah. With the surrealness of it at the very end. Maybe not. And, 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 you know. The ending did give me like poltergeist kind of vibes. Mm hmm. Um, which I appreciate because Poltergeist I think is one of the most underrated movies ever. But it just I, when we get into the spoilers, I'll say specifically, mm-hmm. just rub me wrong. I just was like, no, no. I felt like it was an idea that one of the writers would have pitched, and I'd have been like, no. No, let's not do that. <laughs> let's take a slight version of that, mm-hmm. but make it better. Yeah. And, and do it this way. And I just was like, mm, I didn't like it. Uh, yeah. I'm personally just going to give this for me. Sure. I I I am going to give this like an eight out of ten. I love it. Awesome. I, I thought it was great. Um, You're good. Ele- I don't, you know, to me hearing you say that, I'm like, I can see how you'd say that. Yeah. I think I'm a little more. Just particular, maybe because I was rummaging through all my shit. Yeah, that's fine. But I, I do, I do know why you like it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's hard to describe in words, but I'm, I'm not surprised. I would have guessed that you would have <laughs> gave it an eight out of ten. Yeah, I, I'm a whore for seventies horror. <laughs> yeah. Like I love old shit like that. I love the way it felt. I, like I said, the the smell of smoke through the screen because yeah. there's a lot of smoking. And like you could probably even smell the alcohol on Mm -hmm. everybody because of just the sleaziness. I love that. I love movies that can encapsulate sleaze. I so wanted the dude in the skeleton outfit that never talked to do something. Yeah. I wanted him to do something. I was like, no. They were setting that shit up. You need to have him do something. And nothing ever happened. He kind of came back at the end, but it was hard to tell if he actually did or not. So with that being said, let's get into... Spoilers! (laughs) Spoilers! <laughs> so. Okay, so I ripped the bandit off. You go. Let's, do, okay. let's give some positive before I come right. in and fucking slaughter it. So I'm basically just going to kind of go through the movie a little bit like I did last time and just basically... It starts out really cool with like the shockumentary opening where it like talks about satanic panic, the Grove, like that secret organization for the elite that Delroy is a part of, which comes back in the end and that his wife is suffering from a mysterious form of lung cancer despite never smoked Uh um, and that he's struggling as a late night show host. Um, I thought that that whole thing was fun. That was just kind of, and then like, oh, it's in this special Halloween episode, change the world forever and blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's fun. I like that. Um, and I also like that the, the apparently, you know, kind of side note or behind the scenes, it was actually filmed in real time as if it were an actual late night show. So you're literally singing it from start to finish. So it would have like the parts where it was the show. And mm-hmm. then it would have the black and white parts where it's like the behind the, the stage behind the stuff. Scenes, yeah, behind I the curtain. love the behind the stage stuff. I was just like, th- that's how I imagine they would talk, especially that sleazy Leo guy, the the uh, manager. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. I thought he was a little too over the top because he had like he had no depth, and I understand he probably was designed to not have any yeah, depth. Yeah, absolutely. But I just was like. Okay, we'll go backstage. Oh, here's the annoying guy to push you around and uh-huh. make you do the things. And then we'll go out on stage. And we'll go behind the stage. And here's the annoying guy to come and push you to do things. I just thought it was too too hokey. I feel like, like that's... If you would have came out half as many times mm-hmm. as he did in the movie, I, I would have been like, okay, cool. But I think he just overdid it. He's, yeah. He just overdid it in I, my mind. I feel where you're coming from. For me, though, I felt like because I'm a people pleaser, Mm -hmm. so I felt the anxiety every time that he came on. And I think that's what you're supposed to feel is just that anxiousness of like, oh, my God, 
fuck, I know something happened and he's going to tell me and I'm going to be fucked. So I was in yeah. Jack Jack's like head and I was just like, oh, my God, like and, and we got to go show must go on. And this guy's pushing it. And then literally some dude fucking died on the way to <laughs> like to the hospital because after he spewed out his that guts. Was, that was the coolest part. Yeah, that was the coolest part. Um. So, yeah. So that whole thing was crazy. Um. Christo was the guy that spewed mm-hmm. out his guts. Yep. He's the sidekick guy, the kind of charlatan that comes in. It's mm-hmm. like, yes, you, you're, I'm getting a reading from blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. That guy. And then he finally actually gets a reading. Yeah, from, it's not one he wants. Yeah, no. And it like, it. you can even see like, I love the special effects on it because it was mostly practical where you see like the nastiness welling up inside of mm-hmm. him and it, just the black spew that comes yeah. out. Like, that was intense. I genuinely liked that I part. I did. I liked that part, too. That's in the three-fourths that I like. Yeah. And, like, he gets a uh, signal about an unmarried man that still wears a wedding ring, and it's from a mini who's going to take the call, basically. Yeah. And nobody says anything. Nobody says anything. And this poor guy's suffering to no end. Like, he is literally dying. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, that Leo character's like, no, you gotta keep him on the show. No, this guy's dying. He needs to leave. Call mm-hmm. 911. Um, and then, of course, you have that Carmichael asshole that comes out, the illusionist. Yeah. Which, fun fact about him, he's actually based on a real person. Is he? I, I did not know that. Uh, I looked it up, and he's actually based on um, James uh, R- Randy. He was an actual illusionist that would um, tell people, yeah, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong that your supernatural power or anything like that works in a controlled environment. Hmm. And he would give a sizable check to them if they could prove it. Nobody has ever disproven him. Well, uh, Houdini Mm -hmm. did that. He disproved uh, psychics and mediums and all that Mm -hmm. stuff because I believe his mom... Uh, got money taken from her by them, you know, just believing it and all that sort of stuff. So he would go around and debunk a lot of magicians and stuff like that. And there's been some others that will debunk some stuff. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of that's been around for a while. You yeah. Know? And I just think it's cool that he was based off of a guy from the 70s yeah. that was actually on Penn and Teller a couple of times. Sweet. So that's kind of neat. Um, I also like the little setup, the foreshadowing of like uh, where Jack is basically telling him to calm the fuck down because like this guy's suffering in the chair, the the psychic guy. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, I can pr- disprove you wrong and blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, you know what? He's all wax and no wick. Yeah, all wax and no wick, yeah. That was funny yeah. because we know how he dies at the end. He just implodes from the inside out. Mm-hmm. That was the most delicious thing ever because that <laughs> asshole sucked. You talk about Leo being annoying. Carmichael was pissing me off yeah. the whole time, man. Yeah, the character did that. Um, he just would never let anybody get a word in. And I love that that June lady that later comes out with Lily, the... You know, the possessed girl, Mm -hmm. she like literally is like, you know what? Shut up. Otherwise, I'm going to leave. And I'm like, good for you, girl. You tell him. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll kind of get into my little parts. The direction I wanted them to take the movie, um, obviously they didn't. The, The part that really became my sore thumb was the hypnosis part. Because that, ooh, so I got a lot to talk about with that one. That's when the movie took the hard turn, and I'm like, "What the fuck? Like, why did you do that? I did not like that. I thought it was cool, you know, with the special effects of the worms and all that stuff. Like, I thought that was really cool. But then I was just like, like, why are we doing that? I, I, I don't know. I didn't care for it so, at all. Oh. Can I say my thing about that? No, say your thing. Oh my yeah, god, yeah. I'm so excited. So. To bet for context, oh my god, I'm, I'm like be I'm spazzing out right now because I love the references. Uh, so, uh, to kind of back up a little bit before we get there, uh, when she brings out June and Lily, Lily is apparently this like little girl is a sole survivor of like this um, satanic church that burned to the ground. Yeah, which 
I, yeah. I'm like, it, so it's a satanic church, but how did she get possessed? She got possessed because there was a rit- ritual performed on her prior. I see. But I, I kind of was like, like, she was supposed to be the vessel. It's kind of like an hereditary. Yeah. Where like the kid, the Charlie is supposed to be the vessel. She's supposed to be the vessel. I just would have liked more time on that and more clarification, in my opinion. Um, yeah. I felt it was like an afterthought. In my my opinion, and I didn't like the whole Bohemian Grove thing um, because, like, <laughs> yeah, because that was a real thing. It, it is a real thing. Yeah. Yes, it absolutely is a real thing. And like, I get why they needed to do that for what they wrote, but you have to remember, I don't like what they wrote, so I don't like that direction the way uh-huh. it went that way at all. Um, but that's that back half. Now there are things, so I don't want to be negative, Nancy, and just mm-hmm. shit on this movie because the things that I'm like. Totally cool. Original as fuck. Mm -hmm. Loved that. Loved the time period. The special effects, awesome, except for the ending with the girl. Uh Hated that. The worms, homeboy getting, you know, a power of Christ compels you. Yeah, his neck slapped, smacked around. And it was still backwards after it had a pan shot. That was really cool. There were cool things about it. I just... You know, wanted the movie to go another direction. Yeah. I'll stop saying that because I know I've said it so no, many times. No, that's okay. But um, that's the moment that I started to go, ugh. Okay, maybe this is what Tim was talking about, yeah. was at the the hypnosis part. Well, and let's kind of get into that, why we're kind of working our way up to that. Like, literally after Lily is possessed by Mr. Wiggles, they catch it all on film, yeah. uh, where, like, she... The two voices at once was pretty cool. That was neat. And That's also the cool. fact that she kind of turned Reagan-ish with the eyes I and know, the I, nasty... Yeah, and I, that was directly... Not stolen, but you take it from it. Yeah, yeah it, it was definitely Exorcist. Yeah, and like, and it didn't scare me, believe it or not, <laughs> because I hate no. the Exorcist. And I see, I wanted them to stay with that more. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I wanted to see because she like, levitates too. Exactly, I wanted to see her levitate, but like build up to that more. Like, I wanted to see her like piss herself or make Jack do something mm-hmm. or like. You know, start making like more of a slow stuff move. Yeah, I want it to be a little bit slower. Well, and I think because it's supposed to be like a talk show gone wrong, there's yeah. a lot that add that goes into that, I feel. Because after she like starts levitating and all that stuff, um, Carmichael loses his shit and no. is like, I am going ah, to show yes, you I will show you how this how these idiots did this and that's where that part comes in where he does the collective hypnosis to everybody in the audience it's not just gus except you it's don't know everybody mm-hmm. and yeah we don't know that yeah. until they replay the tape back and i think that was genius i love the replaying of the tape back and i also love that it was a direct oh i'm so happy it was a direct um homage to wizard of gore yeah Oh, I was so happy. I was like, I love Wizard of Gore. I want more of that, though. Give me more of that shit with the worms and everything. And mm-hmm. this poor Catholic guy is just going nuts. That man is a very Catholic man, Gus is. I would literally be in his shoes because he's like begging Jack. I don't want to see this exorcism. I want to get out of here. Yeah. I don't want to be here. He wanted to go. And the producer dude was making him Leo stay. was like, no, you're going to stay. Making smile, too. Yeah. Which was... And I'm like, fuck, bitch, I would have left along. You fire me. Yeah, I don't give yeah. a shit. I ain't don't staying. Need the job. Uh, but yeah, but I love that. I love that Wizard of Gore reference. And then, of course, when they replay the thing back, the footage back with Lily's possession, mm-hmm. that's where you don't necessarily like it because that's where you start seeing uh, his wife's ghost mm-hmm. appears. And then also he... Um, Oh, what is it? Uh, it causes Lily to become repossessed because she's not in the restraints anymore. Yeah. And I think I like that personally. I thought that was really cool, but I'm going to agree with you. I hate that effect of her head splitting open. Oh, my God. That was so stupid. That was not good. That, was that so they, dumb. I, There's so many other things they could have done. I understand the demon was supposed to be like an electronic demon because it was supposed to be a particular demon that manifests itself uh, using electronics and also 
like television. Yeah, and they, and they kind of showed that through, you know, parts. You saw the little, mm-hmm. you know, thing leave. But I just was like, come on, really? We're making her head split open, become gigantic and look like... Huh? That was weird. I, I feel like, like you said, they could have done something different for yeah. that. Um, that was the one part I didn't like. I get like it's supposed to embody, you know, the type of demon that was possessing her. Yeah. But I, I, yeah, that was a little hokey for me. And, the, and like Jack that. on the bed with his wife. OK, so now I'm, I'm going a little forward. But yeah. That's the other part that I was like. I can go without that. I thought that was funny. I, <laughs> I genuinely like thought that was funny. <laughs> so, yeah, because after... Okay, let's go through all the kills sure. because they're funny. They are. Because, okay, when Gus... Before he goes into the hypnotic thing, he goes, well, my well, my wife really likes when my head's attached, so can you keep it that way? Mm. You know, he tells Carmichael this. So... June has her neck slit open. Mm-hmm. And like this is traumatic not only for like Lily, I guess, you know, the actual Lily that's stuck inside because June was like her mom mm-hmm. or foster mother, but also for poor Jack yeah, because he was, he was fucking her. Yeah, yeah. You know it. Like it was just it was heavily implied, and not to mention what's and her it, name. And it seemed like it there was feelings involved on both ends too. Yeah, so. oh absolutely. And it I guess I'm assuming just because of how Lily said, oh, we've met before, Jack, in between the dark groves and everything like that. I assume maybe she met him also. Yeah, I didn't get that part. Is is she insinuating that that the the therapist has been there? Is she insinuating that she's a spirit that has been there herself? Is she the priestess that was there? Like, I was like, She's obviously... You know, when the demon is talking for her. Yeah. That demon is the same one that they conjured in the grove, obviously. Because you see that at the end where he goes into that weird dreamlike state after everybody's killed. Yeah. Um, he goes into like this Twin Peaks kind of dreamlike state where he goes to all the people in the grove. And then that weird like uh, Diablo guy is yeah. there again. Like the LeVay guy um, <laughs> yeah. is there again. And basically is like... You wanted this. You literally traded your soul for everything. You got the ratings, you know? I thought that was funny. I I personally thought yeah, that was funny. And it, and it played off the internet gossip about all the famous celebrities that have supposedly, mm-hmm. you know, worshipped Satan the grove and, and sacrificed a loved one and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Like, I get it. It plays off that. Like, mm-hmm. I totally get the reference. Yeah. But... I don't know. I I liked it. I thought it was funny just because, like, <laughs> it was a cheap ending where, like, you know, she's like, kill me, kill me, put me out of my misery. That was cheap because then he, like, he, he gets out of the dreamlike state and then, like, he actually is stabbing Lily. Yeah. I thought that was funny. I was like, well... I called it. I knew it. You knew it was going to happen. Know, you know what? I what my, my first thought was, wow, you really are an asshole. <laughs> You're stabbing your wife in the stomach to kill her. You know how long that's going to take? Do you have a couple days? Because <laughs> that's what it's going to do. It's just like a stab wound to the gut. Yeah. That's going to take a while. You should have killed her a different way because <laughs> you're an asshole. So that was the part I'm like, why are you stabbing her in the gut? You're just being a dick. Yeah. <laughs> like... That was so I yeah, I thought it was funny because then he gets out of it and like he sees, like you said, the pan out shot with yeah. everybody actually dead mm-hmm. and the audience ran away. Yeah. Um, and then you see the spirit leave, mm-hmm. you know, with the electric. It goes into the back of the electricity. It, it, it brought brought up a shocker. Yeah. For those of you out there. Yes. Very similar to yes. what they do with shocker. And then the ending with like where he's just basically chanting, like mumbling to himself as like the people, like the sirens and everything. I thought that was funny. I like dark endings like that. I think it's hilarious to me. It's like, oh, yeah, sit in it. Everybody you love is dead. (laughs) And you got the ratings, though. Where are you going to go from here? Did he actually survive? I'm going to assume he did. It looked like it. Yeah. But what's what's left? Yep. Like, and that's cool. You know, you get what you wish for sometimes. Yeah. Um, I, you know, found the irony in that. Like, I thought that was, that was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I it just totally, wasn't executed the way. You just not the way I wanted. I, I, again, it's for me, I think a lot of people think that they have to do too much with horror. 
you don't. You don't have to do a lot with horror movies. And I feel like they tried to do too much. And that's why I didn't like it. Because I feel like the first fourth, um, not the first fourth, the first. First half. half yeah. Half, three quarters, whatever you want to call it, had a good flow to it. We had the back and forth banter behind the scenes. We had the guests coming out. We had the guy debunking and, the, and you're seeing the you know, relationship develop with Jack and the therapist. Mm -hmm. And then I think they just uh, cram this yeah. in. Let me cram that in. Let me cram that in, cram that in, in a fourth of the time to where they could have worked some of that shit in the previous three fourths. Mm -hmm. And that's what I didn't like is, is I felt like they packed too much shit in at mm -hmm. the end when it's like, dude, this is horror. You can make her like piss herself, like throw up, like possess somebody else, mm -hmm. manipulate you, all that shit, and then go into your ending, and that's all you need. Do you think that would have been too much, like The Exorcist, though? If they would have so did that? you're you're no because you're doing a possession movie, therefore it's too much Exorcist. But that's the all thing. those possession movies. They're all are, the same. Are, are the Exorcist? Yes, but this is different. I know. So it tried to be different in my mind, and it is different. Yeah, I just think that. You know, that that's my only thing I keep coming back to. Is I, th I just think they crammed too much in. I like that it was original. Um, I just would have liked less. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. We will agree to disagree. Oh, absolutely. And I love that, that we have that dynamic yeah. where we and can, yeah. I'm, I, and I'm more stating my negatives because mm -hmm. you're hitting it with the positive. Yeah, no, like, that's a good balance. Yeah, I have positives. I'm just kind of subduing them mm -hmm. quite a bit because if you remember, I said I like three fourths of this movie. Yeah. Um, just the quarter is is not what I cared for. But, you know, six for me mm -hmm. is a pretty damn average score. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what, you know what I am upset about what, this movie? What? They never did the costume parade. They oh, promised no. a fucking yes. costume they parade. Did. They never did it. <laughs> I wanted to see all those idiots go past and like some weird mumbo jumbo happen and like they get off somehow too. Yes. Like, keep going, keep going. We're going to do the costume parade. Yes. And everybody's like, no, fuck that. <laughs> I would have loved to see that. I'm just upset we didn't yeah. get that. I loved, I loved the, you know, power of Christ compels you. Like, yes. dude, what, what's that going to do? And he got it like he should have got it. Yeah, oh, that it was, was little that was exorcist brilliant. Re reference with his whole head spinning around like the uh, the dude that fell out the window in the exorcist thing. Just that was funny. Around. That was cool. Definitely it was cool. Good practical effects on here, except for the whole head splitting open bullshit with her. That yeah. maybe it was practical effects, but I really did not like that. I felt like with that part, the head splitting open, like they tried to do something poltergeisty ish, yeah. kinda, and they didn't want it to. They couldn't have it go too high tech because of everything that the Being movie 70s, is about. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's what they were kind of doing. Mm -hmm. And it, it just came off hokey, but not in a good way to me. Also, like the I also just adore analog horror. So I like at the yeah. end where like the uh technical difficulty yep. screen is so melting. Do I. So do I. And then it flashes that so it is done. I, real quick. Real quick. Real quick. That if was you're cool. not paying attention, you didn't see it. I also found out that apparently, I didn't know this, uh, that apparently uh, the the ghost of his wife is hidden throughout the whole film. I did not know that. I didn't know that either. Apparently if you like... Kind of like a Where's Waldo thing? Yeah, or like uh, The Haunting of Hill House. Like when that oh, TV yeah, series yeah. came out where there was like freaky images and shit. Like apparently they do that in That's this movie cool. too. I did not know that. That's cool. I'm down with that. So might need to watch it again just to see if I can spot her. True. Yeah, so overall, this movie was fun. I personally liked it a lot. I will see it again. But, you know, as Stephen Keen says... Your results will vary. Yeah, exactly. And I think that I that's a sign of a good movie, in my opinion, is like there's people in your camp that really mm -hmm. like it. And there's people in my camp. It's not that I am like, oh, this movie's putrid. Mm -hmm. You know, I won't watch it. To mm -hmm. me, I'm just like, eh. to me, it was a movie that I, I kind of liked. And then I thought it failed at the end. But no big deal. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of my thoughts. I was just like, eh. Kind of with kind of the same thing with evil evil lurks. I actually think I like this more than evil. I was gonna lurks. say I I, I like this one did. more than evil lurks. Yeah, it didn't have anybody getting punched in the face. No titties. Yeah, no no titties. That's okay though. Yeah, 
it, I, I think titties would have been out of place in this one. I feel like if they would have had any titties, it would have been during the grow scene or something like that. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, you could have snuck some in. Could have snuck, snuck some in. Some in but still, <laughs> that's all right. So um, ultimately, I think we're saying that, you know, Ivy liked it. I'm meh on it. So check it out then because yeah. it's not getting two thumbs down. So watch it with someone. See if you have opinions similar to what we have. Tell us about them. Yes, absolutely. Oh, speaking of tell us. Yeah. Are we talking about the uh, voting process? How it's changed? We can. Yes, we should. We talked about this earlier uh, when it came to voting for the... Um, for what we're doing for Pride Month. Yes, yes. So we did take did a you small choose poll. it episode. Huh. Yeah, the audience chooses. <laughs> yeah. It's audience like, choose Oh, write your like, own episode. Yeah, it's like those okay. choose your own adventures. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So we did a poll not too long ago. I know I said that or we said that we would do it, you know, after this episode comes out. Well, we had to take a little bit of a break just mm-hmm. because things happen in our lives that just we could not control. We're not professionals but, here. <laughs> but we did go ahead and post the poll and remember the 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 options were um drag and yep. we perform <laughs> and then second was the pool dancing and then third was uh interviewing a burlesque troupe which we said regardless if it didn't get anything which in this case it did not or it only got three votes we will still do something with them later yeah we still are but right now it is tied between is tied. dressing and drag and performing and pole dancing. And pole dancing. And per- pole dancing will be like performing some too. Like we, we'll have to it, figure out the yeah, premise we'll of figure it. Figure out that. But drag, we are performing. We will find a way to perform. We know people. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is like, no, I'm s- I'm worried. <laughs> I'm not saying a word. I'm not influencing anyone. Um. It, it is what it is, you know, for you guys, if that's what you choose, that's fine. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> so. I'm not shaving, though. You don't, have, don't to. have to. Yeah, you don't yeah, have yeah. to. Okay. You can be a bearded woman. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's hot. I could, like, <laughs> juggle or be at a carnival. <laughs> <laughs> be a carnival-themed kind of gal. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, those are our two choices. Now we will post. We will actually post something after this. So that way you can you can do the tiebreaker. Mm-hmm. Xavier was the one underground metal, metal that kid. put us metal into kid. this situation. So thank you, Xavier. So now we have to do a tiebreaker. Yep. So all votes are refreshed. We've got the two categories of the only two options you can vote for. Mm-hmm. So any of your previous vo- votes at this point don't count. So great. Now you get another shot mm-hmm. to pick what we're going to do. And especially if somebody didn't get a chance to vote. Here's your chance. Here's your chance. Yes, you will get to see. You can even vote in the comments. I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Just as long as we see it. Yep. It does not matter. So remember that. Mm-hmm. And with that being <laughs> with said, with that being said, look, look out, out for each, each other and good night, cellar dwellers. dwellers. Bye. Bye. Bye.